The following instructional video demonstration will allow you to see for yourself why Serodia TPPA is the technologist-friendly test, ideal for labs with labor and experience shortages. All required reagents, reactive and non-reactive controls, and two droppers are included in the kit. Not included are the polystyrene microplate with U-shaped wells, cover for the plate, and the micropipettes with disposable tips for dispensing and dilution of the samples. A pipette that can dispense 0.6 milliliters or 1.5 milliliters for reconstitution of particles is also needed. A plate mixer and microplate viewers are preferred but not required. Reagents are color-coded and alphabetized. Solution A is the reconstituting solution used to reconstitute lyophilized particles. Solution C contains sensitized particles, and solution D contains unsensitized particles. Ready to use solution B is the sample diluent, and ready to use solution E is the positive control. Negative control is also included in a different small plastic package. Now that you've seen the test kit, let's cover the test itself. To begin, 30 minutes before use, reconstitute the lyophilized particles, reagents C and D, with solution A. Add 0.6 milliliters of solution A into each C and D for 100 tests and 1.5 milliliters into each C and D for 220 tests. Mix the reconstituted reagents thoroughly and allow them to stand at room temperature for at least 30 minutes prior to use. Mix particles again prior to dispensing. Collect serum or plasma specimens according to standard clinical laboratory procedures. Human serum is the specimen of choice for this kit. However, EDTA, sodium citrate, or heparin-treated plasma may be used when serum cannot be obtained. Specimens containing erythrocytes or other visible matter should be centrifuged prior to testing to prevent interference with test results. Store patient serum samples in a refrigerator at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade if testing is done within 5 days. Sera may be frozen and thawed only once. Heat inactivation is not necessary for the patient's sera. However, previously heat treated, 56 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes, sera may be used. Please do not use inactivated or frozen plasma for the testing. Test plasma samples within 48 hours. When precipitant is found in the serum, centrifuge at 2000 RPM for 5 minutes. Using a calibrated pipette or dropper, place 4 drops, or a total of 100 microliters, of sample diluent from solution B into well number one in each row. Next, place one drop 25 total microliters of sample diluent from solution B into wells number 2 through number 4 in each row. Next, use the micropipette to add 25 microliters of each serum or plasma specimen into well number one in each row. Mix by repeatedly filling and discharging the micropipette. Take 25 microliters of the diluted serum specimen from well number one 
and transfer it into well number 2. Next, mix the contents of well number 2 by repeatedly filling and discharging the micropipette and then transfer 25 microliters of the diluted mixture into well number 3. Make sure there are no bubbles inside the pipette tip. Repeat the procedure to transfer 25 microliters from well number 3 into well number 4. Mix and discard the 25 microliters remaining in the pipette after mixing well number 4. Please note to use a new pipette tip for each sample transfer from sample tube to well. However, the same pipette tip can be used to transfer 25 microliters of diluted sample from well number 1 to number 2, from number 2 to number 3, and from number 3 to number 4, and then discard. Using the red cap dropper supplied in the kit, draw up solution D. Be sure to remove any bubbles from the dropper. Hold the dropper vertically to produce complete spherical drops in order to ensure allocation of a constant volume. Add one drop of unsensitized particles from solution D to each row in well number 3. Then, using the gray cap dropper supplied with the test kit, add one drop of sensitized particles from solution C into each row in well number 4. Place the contents of a microplate onto a plate mixer and thoroughly mix the contents. If you do not have an automatic mixer available, tap the edge of the microplate several times by hand. Do not use a rotator for the RPR test for mixing because it will not mix sufficiently. Now, cover the plate and allow it to stand for two hours at room temperature. To avoid distorted agglutination, do not disturb the plate after placing it on the bench. Reactive and non-reactive results will be clearly distinguishable after two hours. Determine the agglutination results as non-reactive, inconclusive, or reactive according to the criteria shown on your Sorodia TPPA Benchmate. To obtain a Benchmate, please contact Fuji Radio Diagnostics at 1-888-499-9998. Comparison of the sample pair of agglutination patterns of the sensitized and the unsensitized particles provides easy and clear-cut interpretation. Controls should be processed at least once on the day of testing or when a batch of specimens is run. For quality control, solution E may be titered to confirm the 1 to 320 endpoint plus minus one doubling dilution as additional quality control for the assay. A non-reactive control should be run with each assay. Either the non-reactive control serum supplied with the kit or an in-house specimen can be used. Inconclusive specimens should also be retested. Specimens that are agglutinated with unsensitized particles need to undergo an absorption procedure. 
that's all there is to it. With just a little practice, you'll soon become familiar with and enjoy all the benefits of Sorodia TPPA.